If you're not in business to make a lot of money, build wealth and financial freedom for yourself and your family, why bother? Because all of you, with the talent shortage, all of you could go get a job for somebody else, make it a lot of money, and get two weeks paid vacation and not deal with half the risk and half the pop problems and half the headaches. Right? I mean, really, you could. One, um, Will Nobles, our, one of our client coaches, said he got an engineer recruited away and in Alabama, right? And he's a really good guy. He couldn't match it. He, he got offered like $300,000. You know? I mean, guys, like the, the talent shortage is out there, which is an advantage for all of you. But if you're going to be in business and you're going to deal with the risk and the headache and the problems that come with employees and marketing and growing a business and all that, then at least make some money, okay? If you're miserable, at least if you're making money while you're miserable, it's easier to handle, all right? You know, it's like, I, I, like when, I, when I have a client that's a giant pain in the ass, um, and it's, it, you know, it, it, we know who they are, and they don't go away, and they come back, they're getting charged more because it's pain in the ass tax, right? And, I, and so I can just remind myself when they show up as a problem again, I can remind them they're paying 30% more than everybody else, you know, for the privilege just to irritate me a little bit. So, you know, um, however you gotta do it. But anyway, so make money in business, all right? And the first strategy I want you to develop is having what I call a real entrepreneurial mindset. Now, real, so real entrepreneurial mindset. You're gonna, you're gonna have to turn quick, 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 like a bunny, all right? All right. Real standing for rewarding, easy, attractive, and lucrative business versus a tedious, exhausting, chaotic, and hard business. That's what we want. We want a real business instead of a tech business. So when I started this, this well, I actually went, I was, I went independent in, um, in 2002, early on, like January. And by 2004, I had created the toolkit because it took me actually a full year to figure out what my niche was going to be. And then once I created my niche, I kind of had to figure out the product. And I was working with, I mean, MSP was just kind of coming, making its foray, if you will. Um, everybody, most people identified as a VAR instead of an MSP. Um, but when I first started, I knew that my customers, all of you, had a big challenge in getting customers. You were depending on referrals, you had no marketing systems in place, and when you wanted to grow, you couldn't do that. So my thought was, well, geez, if I could create the perfect franchise prototype of a marketing system with, with recipes, with systems, process, document it, make sure it worked, and I gave it to all my clients, cats would lie down with dogs, they'd be clients forever, and they would be, they would be making a lot of money. Well, I quickly find out that tactics and strategies don't always translate into results, all right? And I, I learned that because it was a surprise to me when I would give people marketing campaigns that would work if they would do them, but they wouldn't do them or they would half-ass it. And then what, I, what I've, I've come to realize, and we call this, like if you come to a rapid implementation workshop, I start out with saying, welcome to the transformation. Because here's what I've discovered after doing this for nearly 20 years. Most of the people, and guys, I'm not identifying anybody in this room. You, you, you'll know if you're this or not. But most of the people in this industry are techs with helpers. So they start out, they're good at the technical work, they're good at fixing computers, they're good, that, they like that, so they start a business. And who's the first hire they make? Well, it's not even a hire. Who's the first person they get working for them? The wife, right? The indentured servant, right? I'm, honey, I'm not going to pay anything. Um, and I want you to do all the crap I don't want to do. Like, you know, payroll if there's any taxes or collecting bills or whatever, right? It's the indentured servant. And then what's the next hire? A tech. And who's the next hire? A tech. And what's the third hire? A tech. And they end up being techs with helpers. The average MSP, if you look worldwide, I just talked to the um, Michelle uh, McBain, who was uh, with Cisco, is eight people. And they're all technical except for the wife. That's your average MSP. No marketing, no sales, no operations. Techs with helpers, right? Techs with helpers. And so 
giving somebody more marketing with that sort of mindset doesn't change them into an entrepreneur. See, we tend to, we tend to use the term business owner, entrepreneur in the same way of describing what you are, and they're not the same. An entrepreneur acts and behaves a lot differently than a tech with helpers. The entrepreneur acts as an intermediary between capital and labor for profit. That was a definition that was on Wikipedia. They changed it, but that was an actual definition on Wikipedia. It was the best definition of an entrepreneur. An entrepreneur is someone who acts as an intermediary between capital and labor for profit. Not labors for capital. That's an employee. Does that make sense? So an entrepreneur is one that is designing and growing a business. And the skills of being an entrepreneur are entirely different than being a tech. And so thank you, Michael Gerber. Most small business owners, not just you guys, but most small business owners are technicians suffering from an entrepreneurial seizure. <laughs> right? That's what they are. They think because they can, you know, because they can cut grass, they can start a landscaping business. They think because they can, you know, groom a dog, they can start a grooming business. They can, they can cut hair. They think they can run a hairdressing business. And they are doing the technical work. And the skills of running a business are two entirely different things. And so you guys have to decide, what am I going to be? Am I going to be a tech with helpers? And if that's your conscious decision, God bless. That's, I'm not here to tell you you're wrong. It's your life. I ain't your mama. I didn't give birth to you. I don't give it, you know, whatever. I mean, I wish you the best, but if that's what you want, that's great. But don't try to be the entrepreneur without the skills operating like a tech with helpers because that's called frustration. Where you want what an entrepreneur would have, but you keep behaving and, and acting like a technician with helpers. That's all I'm saying. Just wake up to that. Now, how many of you, let me kind of take a little sidebar and I'm coming back to something. How many of you have heard of the 80-20 rule? Pareto Principle, right? It's, it was discovered by an Italian economist, Vilfredo Pareto, who was trying to understand why 80% of the wealth was in the hands of 20%. Well, it turns out it's not just a wealth principle. This applies to the population of cities as well as the mass of stars. So and even in your house, if we went through your house, 80% of the wear is on 20% of the carpets in your home or floors. If we looked at your clothing, 20% of your clothing is getting 80% of the wear. It's like a natural law. You go into a big sales force, we know, 80-20. You look at your customers, 80-20. 20% represent 80% of the revenue and profits. I guarantee it if you look at it, right? Now, we just hope that the 80% aren't causing the same, you know, 80% are causing all the problems, but 20% are producing most of the profits. It's a natural law. All right, now if you look at the wealth pyramid, it's the same thing. So the um, Social Security Administration started tracking where people ended up after working 40, 45 years at the end of their life and where they were financially secure. And they started tracking 1940s, 1950s. And if you look at the numbers today, as it was the pyramid, as it was back then, nothing has changed. Nothing has changed. 20% are in abject poverty, 60% are barely scraping by, 15% good living, 4% wealthy, and 1% is extremely wealthy. The numbers haven't changed. And think of everything that has changed since the 1940s, 1950s. Is it easier to start a business today or harder? Easier. Come on now. You got the internet. You got that, that, that cell phone you carry around with you, you want to know how to do anything, you're a Google search away from anything. Setting up a business, think about like if you, in the 1950s, let's say, if you wanted to sell something, you had to have like a storefront. You had to actually take cash or learn how to do a, there was no eBay or Etsy, there was no online shopping, there's no online, today you can go on and get a, you can get contracts done, you can, everything. It's simpler to, to run a business, but the numbers haven't changed. You look at our industry, our industry, 79% of MSPs are doing less than a million in revenue. They're text with helpers. I just heard that. God's watching. <laughs> I'm just saying, like, you know. 51% um, are making less than 500,000 in sales. I know this. We survey this industry. I've got a massive database. 
That's a very, we're very meticulous with our data. Almost all of them make less than 150 per year. 53% of them make less than 70,000. Almost all of them have significant debt. They're not making progress. And last year, we saw a 500% increase in small micro MSPs going out of business. They were all the break fix shops. They were all the tech with helpers. They, they, just, they either rolled over to another MSP who bought them, bought them, when I say bought them, you know, they didn't really get a multiple. It wasn't like that kind of sale. It was more like, hey, will you help me and take me on as a tech? And, um, or they just went out of business or started driving. I mean, we, we've had people tell us that they started driving for Uber. Um, we have had people tell us that they had to take a job. You know, it's because they behave like a tech with helpers. All right. Here's what you got to know about this. There's two kind of, there's a scale of mindset where there's the operations technician brain and then there's the entrepreneur brain, all right? So there's the entrepreneur and then there's the operational. And here's the thing. You want to start moving your skills and how you orient yourself to entrepreneur versus tech with helpers. They're skills. Folks, they're skills. You're not born with it. I was not a born entrepreneur. I tell people I'm an uneducated, reluctant, successful entrepreneur because I didn't start my business thinking I'm going to grow this multi-million dollar marketing firm. I, I, that wasn't even on my radar. I was just literally trying to eat and pay the rent. That was it. But I developed the skills. So all we're talking about here is orienting yourself more to the entrepreneur, not the tech with helpers. It's behavior. It's behavior. It's what you get up in the morning and you decide to get done.